Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Blankman. I'm the sports director for the Carroll Broadcasting Radio Stations and want to invite you to a new program that we're going to be providing on our website and it is brought to you by Western Iowa Networks, our fine sponsors. And joining me here this evening uh, is uh, Maddie Stenbo. And Maddie is a junior out at uh, Carroll High School and uh, Maddie is also a Olympic weightlifter uh, and has competed at the uh, youth uh, Pan Am Games down in Mexico here just a little while ago. And Maddie, we'll talk about that here coming up in, in just a little while. But I kind of wanted to start off with the early part of your career uh, and how you got into weightlifting. I know your older brother Alex uh, started weightlifting here for Greg Custer at North Highland Weightlifting Club, which is where we're doing the show from here this evening. Uh, but talk about how the early days were for you. Did you come out and watch your brother and what got you interested in coming out and kind of checking out what was happening here? Well, I would watch my brother occasionally. Um, I would, I first went to gymnastics for about three years when I first moved here. Um, and then once I quit that, my mom was like, would you like to <laughs> start um, doing lifting with your brother? And I just decided like, why not? Like it'll give me something to do since I wouldn't have all my time taken up by gymnastics. And that just kind of started my interest. Your first few days out here when you watched your brother lift, what did you think? What was? Can you remember kind of what went through your mind? And were you like, oh, this isn't for me? Or was it like, wow, this is pretty cool. This is something I really want to do. Um, I think I was pretty like, oh, if my older brother is doing it, so I might as well too because since he's cool, everything he does is cool too. <laughs> <laughs> when you first started to lift here, what were the first days like? I know Greg does a really good job of kind of training people into, you know, the technique and the form that you need. How was that training and, and what was that like, just kind of learning things from scratch? Um, it came pretty naturally to me because the same movements were used in gymnastics with like just extensions and all. So it came pretty quickly to me, but we still worked a lot on like the technique and like proper use with the bar and like learning what all the movements were. Maddie, how old were you when, when you first started coming in and got involved in lifting? I was 12. And, and how long had you done gymnastics before that? When did you start? Um, I started when I was five and I quit when I was 12. What was gymnastics like? And you said that a lot of the same movements and techniques kind of talk about how gymnastics mm -hmm. led it into this and, and how those two are so closely tied maybe. Well, gymnastics requires a lot of strength. Like, I would say a good half of our workouts at gymnastics were just conditioning, trying to get our arms, legs, and abs stronger. And that's kind of what lifting is. You're always just trying to get stronger. Um, like, just the same kind of movements. I mean, like, when you would go into, like, a back, a back flip, per se, um, you have to, like, extend your body. And, like, that's kind of, like, when you like go up like this, that's kind of like the same extension you would use in like a snatch. Like you would go like this and extend. Did that help you feel more comfortable right away? Or when did you really kind of feel like you were comfortable being part of the lifting going on here? Um, it took me a while because growing up, I mean, I still am, I guess. I was shy, very shy. And it just kind of was hard for me to get used to a different place. And I would say maybe half a, half a year. It was more easy for me to get adjusted just because my brother would work out with me too. Was there any fear of the stigmatism? Sometimes you hear, you know, girls say or parents say, I don't want my daughter to lift because I don't want her to get all big like a boy, you know, and stuff like that. Was there a fear for you when you first started lifting here of that or was that not a concern at all? No, that's never been a concern for me. Um, I was already um, fairly muscular because of gymnastics. So, I mean, I had been already dealing with people being like, oh, you're so muscular. Like, why would you want to be that big? And a lot of people don't understand that, like, in order to lift, like, you don't have to be big. Like, a lot of lifters are really tiny, actually. <laughs> Yeah, squash that rumor a little bit then you're not a you know you're not big like a boy you're you mm -hmm. know you you look yeah. like a typical teenage girl uh, yeah. you know so w why is it that that stigmatism do you think is still out there where people think that you know if girls get serious into weightlifting that it's going to get them really huge well for sure your legs will get bigger just because your quads and like you're squatting so much but there's been a few olympians that have just been on the head like been a heavyweight like Holly Mangold she is 
I'm pretty sure she's over 300 pounds. And I think since she went to the Olympics, a lot of people saw that and was like, oh, so if to, in order to be a good lifter, you need to be big, which is not the case. You said a lot of the lifters are small. Mm -hmm. Really lifting to me then probably comes down to technique and form probably oh, more than yeah. anything. Mm -hmm, for sure. What is it with the technique and form that allows you to be able to lift maybe weights that maybe other people can't lift? Um, it makes the weight go up easier. Like in order for like keeping your arms straight on the pole, that will help just like, and like using your hips with the bar and like using a straight pole, like that will help you lift heavier weights and like not miss them. Because me and Greg, whenever I miss a lift, <laughs> um, the flies are yeah. bothering us here tonight, <laughs> by the way, folks. Um, every time I miss a lift, Greg will videotape it, and he will will look at it in slow motion to see um, what I did wrong with the technique and where I went wrong and where what I can do better for next time. How much do you guys focus on that, and how much of your workouts every time you come in really are based on just making sure your form and your technique is where it needs to be? Um, every day. we Like, all the time we work on it. If just warming up, he'll be like, make sure like you need to have a like a straight pull. That's something I'm I currently need to work on, and like just like not throwing like throwing the bar out and keeping it close. Like every single lift, like there's something that like we need to tweak. Like it's always a challenge to get perfect technique, and like you know when you have it because the lift is really easy. Maddie, let's talk about some of the early tournaments. You started lifting when you were 12. Mm -hmm. How old were you when, you when you competed in your first tournament, and where was that at? And, and kind of talk about what it was like being at that first tournament. Um, for, like, my first competition ever, I'm pretty sure it was in Des Moines, and I just had a few people from our gym lifting with us that have already been there and, like, knew what to do, so I kind of just followed their lead. And I think I was just kind of amazed because a lot of, I didn't know how many people participated in this. And like each year I've seen it's like continued to grow, but it was different for me. But competing has, being nervous for competitions, it's never really been that big of a deal to me because of my gymnastics background and how I competed with that. So I was used to competing and it was just a change, I guess. And, and some of the arenas or whatever that you lift in, sometimes you're in a hotel, in a ballroom. Sometimes, I know a few years ago, you were down in Missouri at a, a facility, a practice facility mm -hmm. and stuff there at a campus at one of the schools in northern Missouri. So every time you go somewhere, it's kind of a different feeling, oh, yeah. probably in a different atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the time it's in a hotel. Um, I don't know. It's different like for different places but you always got to keep in mind like it's just a mental thing it's not the place that's gonna throw you off because that was something I had to get used to as well like I wasn't because with most gymnastics competitions everything looked the same but when you're lifting you have a different wall in front of you a different crowd and I mean, personally for me, I don't like looking at the crowd, <laughs> but I always pick a spot on the back wall and like, that's where I'm going to look when I lift. Jeff Blankman joined here today by Maddie Stenbo. We're at the North Highland Weightlifting uh, Club uh, owned by uh, Greg Custer and operated by Greg here in uh, Carroll, Iowa. And we're talking, of course, with Maddie Stenbo, who's one of the lifters here. And, and Maddie, let's talk about what it's like at those tournaments. You, you mentioned that, you know, you don't like to look at the people, but there's a lot of people around. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know I've been to the one in Missouri and a few others, and you you go to the back area where it's kind of the warm-up area, and there's a ton of people mm -hmm. trying to get ready and mentally ready. How do you prepare yourself and, and take us kind of through what goes through your mind and how you get yourself ready when you're at a competition so first of all I'll start by stretching and taking a pre-workout drink just to like get me like my heart racing a little bit and then I'll just start warming up most of the time I don't focus on my competition I don't like to look at them because it will psych me out a little bit but I'll trust in my coach and usually my brother's in the back room with me and he'll figure out all the numbers when I have to lift them and when I'm supposed to be ready to go out. And I just put all my trust into my coach and my brother on what I'm supposed to lift next, what my opening attempt's going to be. 
I just, I put my trust in them and whatever's on the bar, I'm going to lift it. Um, I go through this process in my mind before I lift. I just think you're here for a reason. You're going to do good because that will like build more confident in myself. And the more confident I am when I lift, the better I'll do. Maddie, talk about the di different lifts you do there. And, and I think if I remember correctly, you get three attempts or three yeah. weights that you get to try to do. Mm -hmm. First, there's a snatch, and then you'll take a 10-minute break in between and then do the clean and jerk. Any other three attempts for each. And it depends on whether or not you clear them or not, and there's judges that are making yep. sure you make the lifts <laughs> right. Does that make you nervous at all with judges watching you, or is that just, you know, goes back to your gymnastics days? That's just a part of the competition. Um, I think it's just a part of the competition. The judges usually don't make me nervous because um, if I make the lift, I make the lift. And if I don't, I don't like it's just a part of the process. Just getting better for next time. That's whenever I miss a lift, it's like next me, I'll make that. And, and how often have you missed lifts that you really thought you were going to get over the years or do most of the time you end up making all the lifts that you wanted to make? Um, the snatch is harder to tell what I'm going to make. That's for sure. It's usually a hit or miss on those. Um, at youth nationals, I made two of my snatches and I missed my last attempt. And I didn't know if I was going to make it or not because I've never attempted that weight before. It would have been a PR for me. And then for clean and jerk, I just know that you're, you're more tired at the clean and jerks because it's like the second part and that last clean and jerk of the whole entire, like of your session, that's the hardest part. And you just kind of have to be like, I'm going to get it, give it everything I have. Like, and if I don't make it, that's it. That's fine. But you just got to keep your head up. <laughs> I think the really neat thing to me too, is there's kind of there's a real competition there at those. Mm -hmm. It's not that you're just going out there. There's sometimes kind of mind games a little oh, bit. You'll see sure. lifters change their lifts, maybe lift lifts that mm -hmm. they've never even attempted before just to try and put pressure on other lifters mm -hmm. that are there, right? Yeah, that mind games, those, I let, I let Greg deal with those too. <laughs> <laughs> um, usually we'll start at like a lower weight and we'll just see how I feel, but most of the time with competitions, we let the other lifter kind of like, we're going to like psych them out before like we like push me too far. We want to make sure that I can make the lifts, like, and especially that first attempt. We always make sure we, I can make the first attempt. Um, yeah, the mind games are definitely real in the back. Have, have you gotten beat by a mind game before? Have you psyched yourself oh, out with yes. those? Yes. <laughs> um, the one you went to in Missouri. So I, my best snatch at the time was 60 kilos and we opened with 50. I was, I don't think I was, I was missing lifts in the back room and I was just not having a very good lifting day. And we knew that this girl I was competing against that she was really good in the clean and jerk, but that was her best lift and my best lift with the snatch. So I was like, okay, I got to get ahead of her. I got to beat her. And what happened was we went to 55 kilos next. And then I, um, my brother and my coach were like, okay, so we should go to 58 now. Like we want to be safe. We want to make sure you can lift this so you can win. And me just being me, I was like, okay, let's just go 60 kilos. Let's go like it's all or nothing. <laughs> and I ended up missing that lift and the girl I was competing against, she snatched 57. So she was one kilo behind me. And then in the clean and jerk, my last attempt was 76, which was like a six kilo PR for me. So it was huge. But then the girl who I was competing against, she, um, she clean and jerked three kilos more than me to beat me. Does that help yes. drive you to get better? Oh yeah, for sure. The year after that, I was like, I'm not letting her beat me. <laughs> like, that was something I kept in my mind when I was lifting. That next competition, I was there's going to be no missed weights. And that, that last snatch that I missed, that I was going to make that as my opener for the next competition. And you've been able to bring home some national championships at the youth mm -hmm. level. What's that like to, to know that at my age, at my weight range, I'm, I'm the best lifter in the nation? Um, yeah, it's very, um, 
I think it's really exciting. Like I don't, there hasn't been a time where I haven't been grateful for getting first. Um, it's a really good feeling, but it, I just have to keep in mind, like these girls who are on second and third podium, like I know what it feels like to have gotten second and I know how they feel and how they're going to be motivated to come back and beat me and how I just got to keep like keep it up because I don't want to get I don't want to get beaten by girls who are working harder than me so I have to I have to keep that in mind too and the neat thing too about this whole thing you've made friends with a lot of the kids that you compete with you, you chat with them on the phone and, and all the other different social medias that are out there. How many friends do you think you've made over the years just through competitions? Oh, there's so many, <laughs> especially going to the Olympic Training Center, too. I've made, it's over over 10 friends <laughs> from lifting, maybe 15 or 20. I talk to about four on, like, a daily basis, Um yeah, when you're at the Olympic Training Center, you're with your two roommates pretty much all the time. Because, like, whenever you're in your room and they're in, your, like, the same room as you, you're literally sleeping there, you're eating together, you're training together, you're just with them all of the time, and you get really close. And you talk, you say you talk to them on a regular basis. How do you guys help each other, maybe motivate each other? And then I know probably you've told me before, sometimes when things aren't going well for you, you can kind of lean on them for even encouragement mm -hmm. or advice on things. Yeah, um, two of my lifting friends, they both have gotten really serious injuries. And it was important for them to let their feelings out because kind of like me, I don't have like we don't have people at like the same level as I am at this gym, like not with the same goals and stuff. Me and those other lifting friends, we share the same goals. And it's just important to like let them know that like we're a team just in ourselves, even though we're so far apart. And we just keep each other motivated and encourage each other. And those girls could be girls that someday that could be worth lifting at the Olympic mm -hmm. on the Olympic team with you yeah. if you guys all qualify, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, there is one, like, so two of them are, they're in the junior level now, so next year they won't be competing at the youth level with me and another one of my friends. But the one, like, me and the one friend who's still in the youth category with me, we could both make a team together next year. So that would be really neat to see how we have both accomplished our goals. How many more years do you have left in the youth competition? Next year is my last year. <laughs> what are your goals then for next year? Um, I want to make the Youth World Team and the Youth Pan Am Team. So those will be my second and third international teams. Now, you mentioned the Pan Am Games. You went down to Mexico to compete earlier this year in those mm -hmm. just here a couple of months ago. Take us through that experience. What was that like? You're out of the country. You're in another mm -hmm. part of the world, you know, even though it's still connected to the United States. What was that like to be somewhere else, kind of out of your element maybe a mm -hmm. little bit, and, and being competing against people from all over the world? Yeah, it was definitely different because everyone there was speaking to you in Spanish, so you kind of just had to, like, take apart what they were saying with what you know. <laughs> um when you get there, like when you're flying on the plane over, you have to fill out this sheet of like your passport number, your name, where you're going, where you came from. And then you also went through like this whole baggage um, security thing when you got there to the airport. Um, we also met a bunch of different lifters from other countries. And it was really cool to see like how we can connect through lifting even though we don't we come from completely different countries and don't even speak the same language but like how we can still connect with each other Jeff Blankman joined again here tonight by Maddie Stenbow on a new program that we've got on the Carol Broadcasting uh, website. Again, sponsored, as you can tell, behind us here by Western Iowa Networks. And we thank uh, Chuck Dicebeck and everybody out at Western Iowa Networks uh, for allowing us to be able to help do this here. Uh, Maddie, let's talk a little bit about the Olympic training facility. Uh, you got invited there, I think, the first time a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. Uh, you've been out there several times now mm -hmm. uh, since then. Um, what's that experience like? Um, every time I go in with a positive attitude, <laughs> um, you just kind of, you got to go in with like a positive attitude because you're going to, you know, you're going to be working hard. You have all like the top coaches 
because they invite the top coaches along with the top athletes in the country. So you want to impress them. Like you want them to watch you and to help you. Um, most, most days consist of a morning um, stretching and warm-ups for like 30 minutes. That'll be like at 8 o'clock. And then there's two workouts through the rest of the day, and those will last two hours. Had you gotten really serious about lifting before the first time you got invited out to the training facility, or did that kind of change mentally how you approached things? Um, the first time I was invited was in seventh grade, and I wasn't really sure what it was like, what weightlifting really was. Like I was just getting into it. It was about a year, a year and a half um, after I started lifting, and it kind of showed me like how fun lifting can be. Like it doesn't have to be serious. And then the second time I went was last year, like almost exactly a year ago, I went for my second time. And all the coaches there were like, she has so much potential and ability. And I just kind of had to sit down and ask myself, is lifting something I really want to do? Do I want to quit everything and just so I can focus on lifting? And that's what I had to do because I remember there was a couple weeks in particular where I would go to dance in the morning before school. Then I would go to school. <laughs> I'd go to volleyball, and then I would come here to lift right in a row, then go to, ho go to homework, and then go to bed. And just ever since then, I've gotten so much better in lifting. So last summer, my best lifts were 64 and 78. So I snatched 64, clean and jerk 78, and this past summer, the one when I was in, like, the 2015 Youth um, Nationals, I snatched 78 and clean and jerked 95. So I snatched my best clean and jerk from the year before. And that's a lot of improvement in a year. Mm -hmm. You mentioned having to give up dance, volleyball. How tough of a choice was that? Because you were doing that with a lot of your friends from high school, and you enjoyed that stuff. I, I know mm -hmm. I've done a little bit of volleyball work with you in the past, so I know it probably wasn't an easy choice to be able to do that. No. like That's one of the things I missed the most was just being a part of a team and getting to bond with people from your school. Um, I've had to quit so many things, and... Still looking back, it makes me sad that I still can't do those things, but I keep in mind that I'm doing this for lifting, and the lifting is something I want to do for a very long time. And I'm sure you're probably still gaining support from your friends mm -hmm. at school. They, they understand what you're doing, and they support you in it, and that's probably made that transition a little easier for you? Yeah. I get a lot of congratulations and just a lot of people ask, like, how lifting's been going. And it's really nice to see that people didn't, um, weren't mean to me about when I had to quit things. And it definitely made, like, quitting things a lot easier. Because um, they, knew, they knew that if it wasn't for lifting, I would still be in those things. And they understand how much, like, how important lifting is for me. And I, the one thing that I thought was very interesting, I was in here about a month ago, I think, watching you mm -hmm. go through part of a workout, and we talked a little bit that night about how lifting hasn't just changed your mind about what you want to do in the future. It's changed a lot of things about you, how you eat, how you rest, how you take care of yourself. You probably feel like a much healthier person today because of what you're focusing on. Yeah, um, lifting... It's not just about what you do in the gym, and this goes for other sports too. It's not just about what you do in the gym and how hard you train there. It's also about how you eat and how you rest and how you recover your body. I had a little hip injury before I went out to Mexico, and that it just kind of like hit me that I need to start helping my body recover and because I wasn't stretching enough. I wasn't eating the right kind of food, and like now that I know that I don't want to have an injury again, so now that I know what I have to do, I'm going to keep doing that so I can get better. What things have you changed? I know you talked about you eat better, you make sure you get a certain amount of rest every day, but kind of take us through the changes that you've made in diet and everything else and how you feel like that's benefited you. Um, I've noticed a, like a, 
a tremendous amount of like progress since I've started changing like how I eat and stuff. Um, well, first of all, we'll start, we'll start out with like how I eat. I have a lot more protein. I go off this thing um, of macros. So that means I calculate how much protein, fats, and carbs I put into my body. And that helps a lot with how I'm going to gain more muscle. And for rest, so let's say I usually want to get about nine hours of sleep. But if I don't get that because I'm studying for a test or doing homework, usually I'll contact Greg and be like, hey, can I come in a little bit later so I can take a nap before I lift? And so I'll do that. Um, stretching is definitely something I've put into like before working out and after working out routines. Usually I stretch for about 15 minutes before I lift and then 30 minutes afterwards. And then also I'll take ice baths every now and then to help my muscles. How much more flexible and strong and just good do you feel by having changed all of that? Oh, I feel fantastic. <laughs> um, when you're out at the training center, it beats your body up. Like you just feel like complete crap <laughs> and you just like, you can't wait just to rest and everything. But the thing is like when you do, when you rest the right way and eat the right way, you don't feel like crap. You feel like you're ready to get back out and train the next day. You mentioned the Olympic training center again. What's it like getting to work out or at least be in the gym with the Olympians and kind of watch how they work out and how they train their body and, and how mentally and physically they go through every single day? What's that like? That's got to be pretty neat. Yeah, they're so focused. Like when they walk into the room, you know that you have to be quiet and you have to give them their space. They do the same thing. They'll stretch before and after they work out. And there's a recovery center at the Olympic Training Center site where there is like a hot bath, an ice bath, and they have stuff to like um, compress your legs. There's also massages and like chiropractors there. And that's what they do to keep their body in top shape. Maddie, let's get to know Maddie Stenbo, the non-lifter. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot about tonight your lifting and, and what you're doing with that right now and how that's kind of changed. But what does Maddie Stenbo do when she wants to just have fun or hang out with her friends? What do you like to do kind of in your downtime some? Oh, that's not a lot of the time, but because usually I'm thinking about lifting. But when I hang out with friends, usually we just kind of chill at one of our houses, watch movies, um, drive around. I don't know. There's not really much more. Sometimes I like to go shopping, um, mostly for workout clothes. But, <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty much that's it. That's pretty much it. Do you, yeah. you, so you find little ways to try and remind yourself that you're still a 17-year-old oh, kid, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm definitely just like any other person. Um, I like to have fun and just like, I like to get to know people and I also like to keep my grades up. That's, <laughs> I don't know, there's not really much else to me. <laughs> <laughs> now, you mentioned get to know people. I know when I talked to you down at the lifting meet competition down in Missouri several years ago, you were extremely quiet. It yeah. was hard to <laughs> even reach in and pull a word or two out of your mouth. You've changed a lot over the years, and, and now you're a lot more open and a lot more talkative. Is that because of the experiences in lifting and just having to kind of get to know other people? Yeah, I want to say that going to the Olympic Training Center, that's helped a lot because you kind of, when you're there, you have to reach out to people. You have to get to know them. Like you're, gonna, you're with people all of the time. Like there's not one moment where you're away. So you have to get to know people. And that, to me, has made trips and experiences so much better because I know the people and I get to create all these experiences with them. Tell us a funny story about being out there, maybe with Gre about Greg or, or Zygmunt, who, who I know is a big fan of yours out there and, and the Olympic training facility coach and everything. Is there, is there a funny story you can tell us about that? Um, once when we were at the summer camp, so every time there's a workout, everyone will sit down in front of the whiteboard, the little whiteboard that Zygmunt has, and he'll be writing down the workout for us to do. And so we're all sitting there with our um, notebooks open and pens, ready to write down what he has 
for us to do. And he was writing on the board and he was like, kill the body, but not the mind. <laughs> and we're just all sitting there like, oh no. <laughs> and it ended up being like um, 80% back squats at eight reps. And we were all like, yep, we're definitely killing the body. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the future for you. You've mentioned that this is what you want to do. Um, what's the goals uh, and, and what's the future for you and what do you hope the future will be? Um, so like I said before, I want to make two world or like international teams next year and I want to continue to make those. The ultimate goal is to go to the Olympics for sure. Um, college plans right now um, kind of iffy. I don't know exactly what I want to do yet. I could become a resident next year if I wanted to, and if they wanted me to. <laughs> um, I could become a resident at the Olympic Training Center and take college classes out there, or I could go to Northern Michigan University. It's just, it's all up in the air right now, and I just kind of have to see what I want. It's different because this is like the next step in my life, and it's just weird to see it's going to be weird like not coming here and then I'll be like going somewhere else what kind of courses are you hoping to take and do you have an idea beyond lifting what may be kind of a career you'd like to be or is lifting and coaching lifting or anything like that going to be in your future when I'm older I would definitely like to be a weightlifting coach um, just seeing like all the joy it's brought me I would like to give that to others I would also like to become a sports medical um, psychiatrist or just become a, like a sports doctor. Just anything to do with sports, really. <laughs> <laughs> so lifting sounds like, though, it's going to be a part of your life for a long, long time. Something mm -hmm. that, you know, even when you're 60, 70 years right. old, you're going to still want to be around this sport. Oh, definitely. I think I'll probably keep lifting until I can't anymore. Um, so that'll, yeah, pretty much for most of my life, I'll be lifting. And that's like, even when my lifting career is over, I just hope that I can keep in shape with lifting and still be friends with my lifting friends and talk about all the stories from back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, we wish you the best and all of that. I, I do have one other thing here. You mentioned you want to give that joy to the younger kids that are maybe, any advice for any young kids out there that may think about getting into this style of lifting or in athletics, what kind of advice can you give to them? Um, just keep working hard and keep going for your dreams because they're really not as far out as what you think they would be. Maddie, anything we have not talked about tonight that you want people to know about yourself, your lifting career, and, and, and why you've become as, a, as competitive and as good in this as what you've become? Um, I think one of the most important things is just um, working as hard as you can. Every day I know there's like struggles and like how, oh, I don't really want to go lift or I don't want to go to practice. But of course you still go anyways. And you just have to make, you just have to like let yourself know there's people out there training to be better than you. And also if your coach is going to put in the time to help you, you're going to put in the time to make your coach happy. That's what I think about. How much is lifting and athletics really benefited you, do you think, as just becoming the person you are today? I think it's almost everything. I mean, it's kind of shaped my personality. Like I said before, like I'm a lot more open. I'm not as shy as I used to be. Um, it made me like, I have to reach out to people like, with my long distance friendships, <laughs> I have to reach out to people through like texting or emailing. And that's definitely been a change for me because before I, um, I wasn't really good at keeping like friendships um, from like far away places. Cause when I moved here, I kind of lost all my friendships that I ever had. But with lifting, you have to, it just teaches you that you don't need to be close to each other to still be friends. Well, Maddie, I appreciate you giving us some time here tonight. It's been a pleasure getting a chance to talk to you, and we wish you the absolute best of luck in everything you do in the future. Thank you. Maddie Stenbow again, folks, joining us here tonight.